Hi, I'm Gabrielle Applin. I'm drinking a coffee. So you've recorded a few sessions today. What songs did you perform? I performed Home, which is the lead track of my new EP, which is called Home. And I played that three times in three different locations. So is that, that, that video was released Monday a week ago? Yeah, a week ago Monday. It was amazing. It was like 11,000, not 11, 100k in terms of views in a week, which is amazing. Because I do covers on YouTube as well, and like, no covers if you've got that much ever. So that to have happened to my own song in a week is pretty cool. Um, so tell us a little bit about the video, where was it, sir? It was filmed in Canberra Sands and parts of it filmed in Dungeness in South East England. And um, it was so cold. We, in the video it looks very warm. We've had filters put on it and I'm hardly wearing anything, but it was actually freezing. Like, we just kind of wanted to create a kind of really natural kind of thing. And we didn't really want to have, we didn't have a big budget, so we didn't want a big kind of narrative I suppose, it was just, we just wanted to get some really nice shots and we just went to the beach for a day and did that. Um, I've got my own label which I set up to release my music by and I'm going to start releasing other artists through it. This is called Never Fade Records which is the um, name of my, an EP I released through it. And it started off as Ghost Records and then that one got taken, so we ended up with Never Fade but yeah, I'm just releasing through my own label. Bath's a very small place in terms of a city, but I grew up in the kind of the kind of countryside just outside of Bath, so going into town was like a big deal. Like comparing it to London, it, the actual city feels like a village compared to London. It's, it's very weird, but it's, it was a really lovely place to go. I'm glad I grew up there. What were you listening to growing up? Um, Nick Drake, Joni Mitchell. That my dad is a massive Bruce Springsteen fan, so I was kind of force fed Bruce Springsteen when I was about five on this, so I really love Bruce Springsteen. And yeah, all of that really. I love 80s pop music as well. So you've covered Coldplay, what else have you covered? I love Coldplay, I've done, I've done Katy Perry, like, I think she's amazing. She's an amazing songwriter, and even though, kind of, comparatively, our songs, our, kind of our styles aren't the same, but I can cover a song and put it in how I would do it, so it's a sign of a good song. But I didn't really do YouTube covers for people to watch, I just did it for fun. And, uh, have you had some labels sniffing about? Yeah, we've had a few labels, we've had a few meetings as well, but I wanted to hold off. Like We've been having meetings for the last like year or year and a half and just people have been interested, but it's like I kind of wanted to <clears> define my sound before even like attempted to sign anything. It's not that I'm against labels and I really do think in the near future that's a road I'd like to go down, but for now I don't think, like before anyway, I didn't want to just sign something to be moulded into something else. I'd wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing. I think waiting for this long, it, like now I know what I'm doing and I've kind of got my own success. I've got something to say for myself, I think, and I don't feel scared of being kind of moulded into something else. Now. So, um, so you've been, you, you were photographed by Rankin? Yes. So tell us about that. That was not the summer just gone, the summer before, and um, it was like my first EP. I didn't hadn't released anything, and we were like, oh, we need some shots. And we were just going to get some students in London to kind of come down. And um, I've got two managers, and one of them was like, oh, I know Rankin's PA. So I'll ask him, and we're like, yeah, all right, okay, whatever. And um, about an hour later, I got an email back saying, yeah, Rankin's going to photograph you in two days' time. And we were like, oh. Okay, <laughs> so when we did a shoot for free just because he liked what I was about, and I was like, okay. And it was very weird, it was like a massive studio in the Kentish town, and there was like people running around everywhere, and it was like hair and makeup and stylists and all sorts, and, like completely poking at me all the time, like, oh no, this hair is in your eye, and all the stuff. And I was like, okay. it, was, it was mental, but like, I thought it'd be very daunting, but it, it was actually really relaxing, and they were really, really nice. We record and write all the time, so I've got a massive big, we've got like a big, um, I think my manager's got them all on a hard drive, separate <laughs> hard drive, so we've got loads of stuff and we always go back to them every time we need a release and we're like, okay, so let's see what we've got and what we're going to rework and stuff. But I've been having sessions and writing on my own for the last two years, so we've built up a lot. Have you started to understand what direction the album will take? It's going to have a lot of kind of stripped back acoustic stuff and it's going to have a lot of band stuff, but it's all still very organic. And do you know when you are, when the album's going to be out or when you're hoping to get it out? I think early summer, next year. I, I don't want it any later than that, but I don't want to rush it at the same time. I've pretty much written it all myself. Um, there's this guy called Nick Atkinson who used to be in a band who my manager hooked me up with and he's been, if I'm not writing on my own, I'd write with him and he's really cool and he's kind of helped me define my sound a bit as well. Do you find a huge difference between the London crowd and outside London? 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it depends where you go. Like, London's very. They stand still and kind of just look at you like this. Yeah. But it's because they're, they're very appreciative. You can tell if they're not appreciating, because if not, they just talk. Like, whereas you go to, like, say in Bath, even if they don't like you, they'll still stand still, but you can tell they're bored. So, um, yeah, it's very weird. Like, Glasgow, everyone's mental. And it's Dublin, everyone's mental, but in a cool way. Like, they, they kind of, they'll stare and they'll watch you really respectfully. And then as soon as you finish, so they're like, and they'll go all mental again. And then they stop. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's different everywhere. Have you got any summer dates lined up yet? Any festivals in the works? Um, I, I know which festival. I want to do based on, like, based on the ones I did last year. So I'd like to like Secret Garden again and Glastonbury's not happening this year. <laughs> like that would have been nice. And there's just loads of really nice little festivals I'd like to do. And we're hopefully going to do Europe, like do a few European dates just yeah. before the summer, so we can say we've done that. Cool, as well. cool. What, what are your thoughts on music piracy? Yeah. And not everybody pays for music. Um, so like obviously. <clears throat> I, I just don't really know, like obviously people are saying oh, it's artists out of business but really there isn't really much money in recordings anymore, it's more touring or kind of endorsements and things like that, like there's no, there's not really much money in music anyway and I think if you have a true, like true fans will buy it regardless so I don't really know, it's different for everyone really. It was lovely meeting you too, meeting you, lovely chatting with you.